Let's work on the next notebook for data structures. We learned about variables. Variables can store some value, which you can recall them later. But so far, the variables we've learned we could store one text or one number. What if you want to store multiple things? Let's learn about some of the data structures that are used in Python. First, we're going to learn about tuples or tuples. However, you want to call it, I call it tuples. Tuples are things that can have one or more things. So typically used in geospatial science for storing things like coordinates. You want to represent the coordinates of a place. Coordinates, not just one number, right? It's say X, Y, and Z, or latitude, longitude, altitude. You want to store the sequence of numbers together to represent a single value. So let's say we have variable called latitude, variable called longitude. You can create a variable, new variable by putting these two values in parentheses. So if you say parentheses, latitude, comma, longitude, this whole thing becomes a one variable, and this is known as a tuple. Let's run this, and you can see when I say print coordinates, it prints both of them. So now we have two things put inside of one. You can put more things. Let's say we have altitude, maybe so 30, and you can put the third thing. And now we have three things, right? So you can put you know more than one thing in a single container. And this whole thing is one place. Once you have a tuple, you can extract stuff out of it. So we have this coordinate. We can say, I want to extract the first bit of it. So let me print coordinates. Now we have two things. If I want to access the first part of it, so there is two things inside, I want to access the first part, I can say, give me the first value out of this. And you can use this square brackets. The square brackets are the indexing notation that is used very widely in Python. We'll use it throughout the course, when we, even when we work with pandas and other data structures, everything uses this. So when you say, I have code this, which has more than one thing, I want to extract one of this out. So you can use the square brackets and give the index of the place. Remember in Python, counting starts from zero. So if I want the first value, I can say, give me coordinates of zero. And now you can extract the first thing. If I want the second thing, it'll say coordinates of one. What if I say coordinates of two? What do you think will happen? It'll give an error saying that you are asking me for the third thing, there are only two things. So there's an in tuple index out of range error. Okay, so this is how we can do it. We can also extract and store this in a, another variable. So we can say the x value is say coordinates of one y value is. So remember we say latitude, longitude, but when we have x and y, the order is different. So your latitude is a y coordinate, longitude is an x coordinate. So we say x coordinate is the second item, y coordinate is the first item. And now we have extracted those, we can print x and print y. Right? So this is a way to extract things out of a tuple. Tuples are used to hold multiple things. One of the things that makes it different than the next data structure called list is lists are similar. You can again have a list containing multiple things. But lists are mutable. That means you can, once a list is created, you can add stuff to it, remove stuff from it, sort it, and so on. Tuples, once you created it, you cannot change it. So now I have coordinates and say, oh, I forgot, I want to add one more thing to it. I can just add stuff to it. The tuples are immutable. And that's a useful feature. Sometimes you say, I'll create something. I do not want any part of the program changing my value. You can use tuples. But if you want your items to move around and say, I want to remove item, I want to take out items and add stuff, you can use lists. Lists are similar, but you can create a list using the square brackets. So here we have a variable called cities. Square brackets, we have listed four items, each with a comma, and we have four things. Let's print it and see this. We can use the indexing notation the same way. So let's say I want to extract New York out of this. How would I do this? I want to print just a New York from the cities. What would I do? What is the index of New York? Zero, one, and two. So we can say cities of two and print this, you get New York. Okay, so you can use the same indexing notation to extract a particular value. When you have a list, you can use this function that Python comes with called len. Len is a function that will tell you how long is 
something. So in case of list, it'll tell you how many items are there in the list. And length function can be applied on many, many Python objects. So let's check what is the length of cities. So we say, give me the length of cities. We say four. There are four items in the list. As we mentioned earlier, that we can change this. So I can do something like this. Cities.append Boston. So in list car mutable, you can add stuff to it. So I can say cities.append Boston. Done. Right? So we have added stuff to it. Nothing happened, but my program said, okay, I added Boston to this. Let's check the length of cities. It has become five now since we appended one more item to it, right? So we just saw how we can modify a list. Now, if I just print cities again, you'll see that along with the previous list, we have Boston in it because we just added that. So you can kind of modify and stuff to elements. One of the useful things you can do with list, and you'll use this in the programming, is you can sort stuff. So let's say I want to sort this. So I can say cities.sort. It has sorted this. Let's print this again. So I print cities and see it's sorted. You might be thinking, how do I do opposite order? How do I do descending order? By default, the sort function takes uh, sorts in ascending order. You can go and look up the documentation for the sort function. So let's learn a few ways that you can see the documentation of different functions in Python. There are many ways to do this. You can use JupyterLab also has a way to access help. I'll tell you my preferred way. I like to just use search and come to the internet documentation. So I'll just say sort function Python. And I'll come to the main Python documentation. And I like this because it has got examples. It doesn't just tell you what the function does. It has got code examples. And you can kind of you know, use them, see how things work. So again, this gives you a lot more kind of code examples that you can learn and do sorting things. If you go to the documentation, there is a keyword reverse equals true. And now if you did this, it'll be reverse. So if you want to sort a list, you can sort it in alphabetically or reverse alphabetical order in any way. Many times you're working with some data and say, I want it sorted, and you can just do sort. If it's numbers, it'll sort in ascending order, reverse will sort in descending order. And again, sort will change the list in place. So you have a list of things. Once you sort it, the index will change. So now if I say cities of two, it'll be different, right? Because we have sorted, we have shuffled the order around. And this is the kind of behavior, sometimes it's not expected, where you do you have a list of things you say, I have put stuff at second place. If you always wanted a second place, you may you want to use tuple, not list, because this can be changed. Some other function might call sort, and your list will be sorted. So again, this is the kind of key difference between a tuple and a list. Lists are again very widely used because you can maintain some data, reading some data from a file, and you want to write some data back. The lists are more helpful, but you can uh, change the structure. All right, that's all about lists. The next kind of data structure I want to teach, it's not very widely used in rest of Python, but for geospatial stuff, it might be helpful. I've used it a lot when I'm working with some messy data and I'm doing some data cleaning. Sets are what you remember from your high school algebra. Remember those Venn diagrams where you have this intersecting things and you can say, find the common things between those two things. So sets are those. Let's say I have my list of cities. I'm going to copy this here. So let's say I have this two lists. I have a list of cities and list of capitals. I want to find which of the cities are also capitals to find common items between those two. I have a list of capitals, list of cities, find cities which are also capital. Now this is a kind of hard problem. Imagine you don't have a list like this, you have files. I have a file with a million items. I have another file with a million items. I want to find stuff that is common between those. Right? This is the kind of task that you can use Python for. The easiest way to do this is first create a set from it. 
Typically, sets are created from lists of other objects, or you can create it set using the curly brackets column syntax. But typically, you just have a list and you say, I have a list, give me a set of this. So I have a set. Once you have a set, you can run some functions like intersections or difference and so on. So we can say, once we have set, we can say, I have a capital set. So capital set dot intersection city set. So this will find me all the common items. So now this says there's only one thing common on Atlanta between those. Okay. And similarly, you can do dot difference and so on. So this is useful when you're doing some data processing, you want to find duplicates or um, common things between those two, you can use a set. There's also, if you want to merge two lists, you can do something called extend. So if I say cities.extend capitals, it has merged two lists. Cities, and I add stuff from the cities. So this is a way to kind of combine two lists. As I mentioned, sets are not as widely used, like you're not programmed for a set, but sometimes when you have a data processing task, it's useful to get a set. One of the things that sets are very useful is when you have a list of things where there are duplicates, you can see this is a list where I have some duplicates. I have Atlanta that is given twice here. So now I have the cities list, which I've extended. And if I just print this, I have duplicates. So I have Atlanta is, is repeating. If you want to find, create a list of only unique items in a list, the easiest way is to create a set. So if I say create a set of cities, a set has a property that you can only have unique items in them. So when you have a list with duplicates and you create a set out of this, the set will have only distinct items. Very useful things, one of the very popular interview questions, you have a list of things, how do you find only the distinct items on that? And the answer is you create a set out of this that will give you only the unique items. Last thing that we want to learn is something called a dictionary. So far, we've learned about lists and sets and tuples, which are un, which are list of things. And if you put stuff into a list, you need to remember where you put it. So let's say I have a list of cities. I can go back to our original list here. I have a list of things, and I want to say extract some the New York. I need to remember what was the index of it. And that if you have structured data, as so I put five things in a list, and to remember what was the fourth thing, what was the fifth thing, and that doesn't scale very well. I have 100,000 things, I don't need to remember what was the index of each item. So when you have structured data, which most of our geospatial data is, everything has a value attached to it, right? So you have a name and a value. So when you have structured data, instead of putting them in a list, you can put them in something called a dictionary. A dictionary is a structure that allows you to name things. You can create a dictionary using this curly brackets. And here we want to put three things. Let's say I want to put San Francisco, the population of San Francisco, and the coordinates, all in one single data structure. If I say create a list, so I'll just show you how to do, how to do this in the alternative way. So I'll say city list. I'll say I'll put San Francisco, its population and its coordinates all together in a list. This also works because you can have multiple data types in a single list. There's Python doesn't care. You can put things belonging to different types of data structures in a single list. So I have a list of the name of the city, its population and its coordinates. Now, if I say, I want to know what is the latitude of San Francisco. I need to know what's latitude second or third. I need to remember that. Right? Instead of just putting together in a list like this, we can say, I don't want to remember the index of each item. I'll just name them. So instead of creating this, I can say, San Francisco is a city. I'll assign the name city to it. This number is a population. This thing is a coordinate. So now instead of just values, I have keys and values. So a dictionary is a data structure where you can give keys and values. So it's a key is city, value is San Francisco. Key is population, value is this. Now, when I print this, you can see I have this dictionary. which has got three keys. Each of them has a value. If I want to know what was the coordinates of this city, I can just say, I have data. Give me the key called coordinates. I just need to remember the name of it. 
and you just print that. I don't need to remember where was the index of it. So if you have, say, a lot of metadata about a place, or you have reading a CSV file, and you say, I have 100 columns, I don't want to remember which column was what. I can just give me the column name this. Right? So a lot of the structured data will be represented as dictionaries in Python. It uses the same indexing notation. So you can use the square brackets to name any keys and you can print that. So you can say, I want to know the city, name of the city. You can just use the key city and give the value of that. 